Hey, Marina, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Doing okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I put down some agenda items. I think the first few items shouldn't take too long. Um, so we can spend the bulk of the time uh, going through the document you pulled, uh, you wrote, yeah. and then I can uh, share some um, comments there. So I think the the first thing that I wanted to cover was, you know, we've been starting to discuss prototypes in other aspects of Notary. Um, I put together an outline for uh, the key management components that we would want to prototype uh, and the stages that we could go through them uh, in. So um, the uh, do, you, do you have the notes visible by any chance or would you like me to share my screen? Um, yeah, I just pulled it up. So yeah. I can okay. Um, so the ones that I proposed are one, first one, like, you know, um, let's have keys available for signing um, for the client. So this would be addressing like, you know, can we have keys stored uh, on the device or in sort of like a cloud HSM. So less about how we manage the keys or more about just kind of having access to the different areas that we expect keys to be stored in. So I think that's the first prototype. Um, a second one, would look at key rotation. Um, and so this could be either through tough or any other mechanism that we agree on, uh, but essentially making sure that, you know, as these keys are expiring and I'm talking more about sort of the, uh, the signing keys and not necessarily the root, uh, but the signing okay. keys, timestamp keys, any other keys that you want, uh, we wanna have a prototype that rotates these and makes this available for signing. Um, the third component of the prototype uh, that I saw was kind of having the, on the deployment side, um, having the trust store being configurable uh, and using that for signature source validation. And I call out signature source validation here because I think the first version of the signature validation, which is where you're just looking at the signature that's presented and determining whether the artifact is uh, integrity has been compromised. I think that's something that can be handled outside of key management. Uh, and then the uh, key revocation or allow list, deny list, I think can be a separate prototype. Um, we may end up doing both at the same time. I think Tough allows for both at the same time. Um, but I, I want to track these as separate prototypes. So if we end up with an approach that takes parts of Tough but has other components for allow list, deny list, we can implement them separate prototypes. So those are the four components that um, I think from a prototyping perspective um, made sense to me, but I want to get your thoughts on it and see sort of like, you know, what we want to uh, go back to the larger working group with. Yeah, totally. I think for the, um, from kind of the, the tough perspective anyway, um, I think mostly the key management that we need is for the root keys because kind of the root manages keys for other roles within mm -hmm. tough, kind of how it's designed, but I think there's still this big, um, like the kind of the original key distribution question for those root keys, I think there's definitely, you know, still, still a question. Um, and so I think, yeah, I guess my question is kind of like the scope of it. And then I guess like the key rotation that could happen both within tough and within those, those root key situations. And we can kind of discuss those cases. Right. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, I think the what I want to kind of set here is what are the scope for each one of these prototypes, and then like you know we're we're gonna have I think two key conversations I think that are reft are like how do we do key rotation and how do we do key allow list deny list right or signature allow list deny list to be more yeah. specific, uh, and I think those conversations aside, um, which I think kind of like, you know, bleeds into sort of like um, whether we can use tough or tough needs modifications or we need to go back to the drawing board. I think um, uh, those are separate conversations, but in terms of like, you know, let's say even like, let's say we agree on tough, right? Uh, would these four components make sense as like, you know, things we want to prototype to you? Um, well, I guess like my question would be like, because if, Kind of it depends a little bit on what tough is scoped for, because with our idea of scoping tough more for the organization level, a lot of the like developer key management would then be done within the organization and then kind of chained up to that root key. Mm -hmm. But then for that root key, I think these questions do make sense. Like you know, especially something like a trust store for root keys, I think could be really valuable. Mm -hmm. and it's definitely something we should prototype and make sure that that works. 
Um, I think the question of the, you know, the, the exact keys used for signing images might be kind of more within the scope of the tough prototype piece mm -hmm. of this. But I guess we, those can really be done in tandem, I think, like the tough prototype as well as the kind of root key management prototype. Right. Like I think the 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 one that you've when you talk about like the signing key management, I think that plays more into the keys used for signing piece. And mm -hmm. then when you talk about the root key management, I think that plays more into the key rotation component, right? Um, and from my understanding of tough, those are things that you know we can rather than prototyping like an entire end-to-end -to -end, um, tough based workflow, uh, we could potentially do sort of like parts of tough and then you know, because we know how the remaining architecture works, we can say, here's where we're going to scope this prototype to. And as a next step, we're going to address the next step of integration. So I think logically or sequentially, like do these different components then kind of like align with what you would envision for a prototype? Yeah, exactly. Like for tough, you could do, you could implement kind of all the targets metadata pieces first, um, right. the exact signing of images, and then things like um, the timestamp and snapshot. I know we've had some discussion about where exactly um, those should be um, generated and things like that. And that could be like another piece of that prototype. And that kind okay. Of, yeah. um, all right. Um, I want to keep the prototype scope uh, very generic for now. Mm -hmm. um, and then as we kind of align on the key rotation and signature law, this denitis conversations, uh, we can start adding in more on what we expect those implementations to look like. So what I'll take a crack at is then based on these four components, I will put together a, 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 a pull request later today. Um, take a look at that. I think we can iterate on it offline and then present that to the larger working group on Monday. But this should be a small doc, and I think this should be easy to kind of pull through. Yeah, that makes sense. OK. Um, the next one, I wanted to go back and revisit the pull request that I have open. Um, and I think the. Uh, the thing that I put there as a to-do for discussion was the key rotation component. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up that pull request. Yeah, just the updated key management scenarios. Yes. Yeah, lots of comments in here. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Are you still there? Sorry. Uh, yes, sorry. I always struggle to kind of pull this uh, yeah, no worries. Uh, document up, finding the right place for it. OK, mm -hmm. there we go. I think most of the comments we had covered in the previous discussion. Um, but looking at the file itself, uh, the area where, where I'd like to get some more feedback is the to-do scenario, right? So I've listed out, um, uh, I think, six areas that we need to cover. Uh, let me actually uh, share my screen. Give me one yeah, second. Yeah, I'm going to figure out which section.
I'm actually going to just edit this document live so we have notes. All right. Okay, so I think this is the area that we want to refine further. So um, uh, we called out that we want to have a discussion between having a mechanism for rotating a key versus not having a mechanism. Um, the uh, the challenges here, I think, like you know, we have some um, uh, assumptions that are baked into approaches we are used to, uh, which I think need to get called out. So, for example, from you know the traditional X509 certificate-based assumptions, um, there are things like you have a CRL or OCSP endpoint that's defined in the certificate. Um, which is something that we just kind of consider as part of the root key um, sort of definition, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think from the tough perspective, that's slightly different in the sense that um, the uh, pointing to where the signature or, or the key repository is, if you will, um, kind of gives you that information. So I think those are things we want to call out. Um, and I think the, uh, the, the comment that I had more in here was oriented more that um, a root key itself should not be designating what the next root is, right? Like you shouldn't be having to sign off on an update with the existing root key, but if there's like a shared repository of keys or some other trust mechanism that you have to validate where what the what a valid root is, I think that's useful um, in 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 getting new roots and things like that in place. Yeah. So and I think that, that oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, sorry, go ahead. I think that part of the reason the tough mechanism is what it is, is that we we really expect there to be multiple root keys, preferably like three or four of them. And when you do that key rotate that that root rotation, you're you're you are technically rotating the keys, but you're most likely not rotating all of the keys. You're saying, okay, you know, this one key maybe needs to be updated. And kind of we collectively are then updating um, that key. And it just kind of makes it a little bit more transparent to the user just to have that all. Built in yeah, I, I think like, you know, when I think about multiple roots, when you have some, when you have large organizations, like multiple roots make sense to me because you can have isolated roots, you can potentially put this roots in different HSMs, give different people access. Like that's where I think the multiple root um, really becomes uh, 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 a, a good mechanism for addressing that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you think about like the individual developer, right? Um, if you're asking them to handle multiple routes, they're likely being stored in the same key store. Uh, and in the event of a root compromise, like I think we, I would work with the assumption that all routes would be compromised at the same time, right? Yeah, totally. um, but I think that the um, that's part of why like root delegates to those targets metadata, which are given to the individual developers. I think the idea there is that um, by making root a little bit bigger, you can you can do more of that kind of secure key management stuff for root. Right, and I think that's the that's the that's the call out here is that in that model you're expecting that individual developers and and, and I'm using developers loosely here. When I say individual developer, I'm saying like a publisher is like a single developer, right? Um, yeah, it's probably a team, but we'll call it yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, so like, uh, let's even call it a team, like and even in the in, 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 in the aspect of like a team contributing software, they may not necessarily have the same um, key hygiene that like someone like a registry operator like Docker might have, or like, you know, large enterprises publishing software might have, right. And I think when we talk about multiple routes, I think we want to also add in requirements that says, the multiple routes is a great use case as long as these additional things are in place, right? Uh, and calling out what those additional like separation of keys are and how they're managed, I think that's where that that becomes useful. Calling that out and also saying like you know in this scenario we're expecting either registries or some central root authority to kind of really manage the routes and issue more of the delegates to developers that then need to sign with it. Um, so I think that's really what we need to call out in this root key rotation discussion is um, who is taking advantage of these. Um, so let me take, take some notes here. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And if you have like a really small one organization registry situation, 
maybe mm -hmm. that's a little bit different, but for like the dockers or whatever of the world, I feel like it makes sense just to kind of allow them to do that kind of management. Roots. So who's handling roots? Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, they, yeah, do they have the infrastructure to store them in separate mm -hmm. hardware? And I think that you know whether or not we allow root key rotation, there I think there are definitely going to be situations where it, it won't be able to, you know, where you have to actually revoke the keys manually. Right. It's inevitable. Hopefully rare, but you know. Yeah. And I think we can further refine this by um, we want to call about provide mechanism for configuring mm -hmm. and rotating a root key, right? Because those are two separate conversations. Yeah. Um, so adding a mechanism to configure slash rotate keys. I guess allows... these are especially, I think, pros for the rotation section, the configure. Yeah. Uh, and I think a call out here is consider whether this mechanism needs to rely on existing root or roots. Yeah. And make the distinction for multiple roots. Okay, uh, and then not adding a mechanism, I think, uh, goes pretty broadly. I think um, uh, right now um, we'll want to capture more data to make each one of these clear um, and really make it very um, uh, precise from the developer's perspective and, and from the perspective of the different personas, I think, what it what what this means. Um, in Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was just agreeing. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, and then in terms of scenarios to consider, because I, I think I've found the scenarios to be very helpful in kind of walking through like what different use cases would be. Um, so far, I've got publisher loses key, um, needs to update key for, you know, maintenance reasons, whether it's like, you know, your keys expiring or you need want to move to like a more secure key type. Uh, and then sort of like some of the compromise scenarios. Um, anything else you think we should consider here? Um, I guess, I mean, I think it's not really, yeah, I think that those are the main ones, I think, for the root key um, rotation that are, mm -hmm. that are kind of relevant. Um, and there's, there's expiration, but that's kind of, I think, tied into the um, needing to update it for some other reason. Right. Uh, so this, let me, let's kind of like keep adding here includes expiration. Yeah. That's probably or... actually the most common case here. Probably. Right. So. Okay. All right. Um, so I think this is a good doc to start collaborating on. Um, yeah. What I will, hmm, I wonder what a good way to have like collaborative docs are. Um, have you had success in working in Git or uh, have you used other mechanisms for like a shared doc? Um, I've used both Git and GitHub, no, sorry, Git and Google Docs. Um, they have pros and cons. Um, I think that the Git history is a little bit easier if you have a lot of people, but Google Docs, I think is a little faster edits. So it depends on, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, I found like Git to be useful for tracking comments, but I've also found it very difficult to kind of like take someone and <laughs> uh, take someone's requirements and edit. Uh, yeah. What I'll do is I will create a doc uh, in my repo for this one. 
Um, if you don't mind kind of like submitting pull requests against that, uh, and I'll merge them in as soon as they come in and then we can go through comments and stuff and then we can merge that into the main repo um, once we once we're aligned on sort of like this doc has all the information that we feel yeah. is needed to present to the larger working group. Does that work? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Um, this one I'll likely get done by tomorrow. Um, and I think we'll probably need like a, a week to kind of get this in place. So yeah, we'll uh, next Monday. Yeah. Um, and then let's go ahead uh, and review your pull request. Mm -hmm. Oops, let's save these. I'm going to stop sharing my screen as I go through this. Yeah, so this is basically just my like um, putting on paper some of the discussion we had and some other thoughts I had mm -hmm. about key revocation. Um, kind of breaking it into those three big categories we kind of talked about the expiration, revocation lists, and I called it like distribution of trusted keys. I think your allow a list, deny list is kind of a similar idea. Um, those yep. are kind of the two big options there. I think that the key expiration is um, like it's it's not sufficient, but I think it's a nice addition to either of the other solutions. Um, so that it, you know, with no other action, keys don't last forever. I mean, those those can be long expiration times, but they I think they add a, a nice benefit there. Yeah, I think these are good callouts. Um, what I think like to kind of make sure that we are focusing on the right area here, like key expiration, like I think regardless of whatever mechanism we go through, right? Like all the, uh, whether it's like X509 certs or whether it's tough, I think key expiration is fairly well understood um, where I don't think we have a lot of debate there. I think calling out what key, key expiration is and what the expectations are, um, I think are good because it's gonna drive a conversation around, um, do we want to look at a timestamp authority? Because there are two implications of key expiration, right? Um, one, was the key expired when you generated the signature or mm -hmm. is the key expired when you validate the signature? Right. Um, if you do the latter, you don't need a timestamp authority, but then that means you're on the hook to re sign every artifact uh, that you ever signed uh, with the key, which is a pretty daunting task. Uh, yeah, and you and can't the, actually, you can't really do re revocation with just expiration. It's not exactly revocation, it's like expiration. <laughs> Yes. Um, and so expiration is just, I think, like a way of controlling what are the signatures that you need to track actively, because you're essentially saying I have I'm, I'm putting fervor to contract that says up until this point, I'll give you more information on this artifact that I've signed or the keys that I've used to sign it. Beyond that, you're using it at your own risk because I'm no longer going to give you that information. Right. I think that's yeah. how uh, we've typically viewed key expiration. So. I think for a overarching doc, key expiration makes sense. Um, and I would call out sort of like the, uh, where the timestamp authority comes in. Um, and I think tough handles timestamp authority with the timestamp key. Yeah. Um, and so just kind of calling out that you need a timestamp from a trusted source um, to show that when the, when the signing was done, that the key was still valid. Yeah. Um, and actually, the timestamp, I think, even more so for, than for expiration, is really important for both revocation and or for both of these other scenarios. Because whether you're distributing a list of trusted keys or a list of untrusted keys, you have to know that that list is current. Um, and you can't, and it can't be certified by the key itself. It has to be kind of some external thing. Yep. Otherwise, it's kind of meaningless. 
So yep. um, that's really where the timestamp service comes in. And I think we'll need that kind of with either solution. Yeah, I think um, I would call that out for a separate doc. Uh, and uh, because I think in, in key revocation, um, what I what we want to uh, what I'd like to kind of deep dive on is the allow list denial list model, which essentially says, as long as something has passed through this expiration check uh, and it fits with the trusted keys that have been distributed, um, we still need a mechanism to track whether a signature is valid or not, right? Uh, and, and that's sort of like the dynamic updates that even when you've set expiration time, even when you've said, here's my trusted set of keys, you may still want to say, I don't trust this for a multitude of reasons. Um, for example, for Tough, we're saying we're only trusting, let's say, the last X number of updates. That's your allow list model. From a revocation perspective, you're saying, I don't trust X, Y, and Z updates because they have some security issue. I think both models work, but we just want to capture what the trade-offs of those approaches are. Yeah, for sure. And I think that um, that was kind of my goal here is to kind of describe both of those models and um, what the trade-offs are. I do think that mentioning timestamping here is important because I think it's important to understand that um, you know a, a list of things that are revoked or a list of things that are valid is um, like it has to have actually a short validity time. Otherwise, it can very easily be replayed and um, lose a lot of its security properties. Yep, I agree. I think um, I would call out timestamp uh, and I would say, let's actually do a separate doc if you, let's do a separate doc for this. And I think we want to actually review this overall doc first. So to set context, I think this is a good overall doc and I would call this uh, um, actually what, this is this like signature validity, right? Because mm. you're, you're touching on everything, uh, so this is source, uh, expiration, allow list, and I listed. It pretty much covers everything, which I think is a good overall doc. Yeah. yeah. OK. Um, so key expiration. I think the distribution can be handled in the uh, the key rotation mechanism doc because I think we want to set some context on how keys are being distributed. So I think that my kind of my, my point here basically is that if you have a distribution mechanism that's updated on every like refresh cycle, mm -hmm. um, that can be used as a revocation mechanism, um, kind of like the way Tuff handles it where you re-download, you know, for example, root metadata, and if something has been expired in there, you then get those new ones as part of your new allow list of keys. Okay, I think that's a, um, the, uh, that's a good point, and I think we wanna track that. But I think we're, um, in, in terms of thinking through sequentially, I think the first step we wanna track is the, um, allow less deny less models, right? So if we break it down into what do we want to do, right? Like mm -hmm. in, in terms of sharing, um, let's have that conversation first. So I think if you think, uh, where do we put this? Yeah, comment? and I guess it kind of, the distribution is, is relevant, but it's definitely a separate question, but because basically if you're doing the allow list, you only need one distribution mechanism for, for keys. Whereas if you do the denied list, you now need two mechanisms, one for distributing keys and one for distributing this revocation list. Um, I think for allow list, you may, there are other considerations to take into place, right? So if you, for example, when we Right now, when you're expecting the allow list to be shared by the registry, um, there's a question of like, you know, once the artifact gets to multiple registries, um, what are the requirements we're imposing for that allow list to be propagated, right? 
So let's take the scenario that I push a signed artifact to Docker Hub. Um, someone else pulls um, some information. Someone else copies that 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 artifact into some other registry. Mm -hmm. Then now I am pushing my latest updates into Tuff. I'm pushing the allow list in. Sorry, I'm pushing the allow list into a Docker maintained uh, sort of uh, Tuff repository, right? Yeah. Um, someone else then has to pull in that information into their registry and keep that tough repository updated as well right so yeah. i think there's I a think... couple of, of options there but i think that that's definitely the easiest the other would be that the registry kind of performs its own verification um and trusts it independently but i think that the better solution is to definitely to to pull those lists across right and if you start kind of looking at how this starts chaining down. I think that's where the separate rev the separate mechanism allows you to kind of rely on a centralized distribution for trust. Um, whereas the tough model is kind of going to a chain model where you're essentially having the registries update uh, information as artifacts are moved through. So I think um, that one, I think rather than look at distribution of trusted keys, um, well, here's a question, right? I think I think this one, I think you're actually kind of putting on a a fourth area here. So, distribution of the the one is an allow deny list for key revocation, mm -hmm. and then the second one is a distribution of this allow and deny list. Um, I think Tuff is merging together distribution of trusted keys as well as distribution of the list, yeah. which I think we can call out but I think we want to look at those two separately. Um, the reason I say that is that when, when you need to rotate your keys is different from when you need to kind of update this allow or deny list. Um, I, I think that they need, they, they, they should have some areas of overlap when we look at it in the overlap or in the overall document and we make a final decision. Um, but I think in terms of calling out the key revocation list, the um the 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 separate the distribution of that list is this is is probably closer in that doc so i think you're you're calling out a need for three docs here um does that sound reasonable <laughs> um maybe or maybe like a sectioned document or some such but yeah right <laughs> so different sections um yeah. i think another um interesting question is what are is keys are trusted for what and i think that that's another um piece of the puzzle here because um like you might say, you know, you might temporarily want this key to be trusted for this service and then say, oh, no, it's not trusted for that, but it's still trusted for this other service. And I think making sure that that fits into the model, I guess one option would be to require people to generate new keys, which is which is fine. But I just think that that's a scenario that we should think about. Um, I think that should be covered in the uh key requirements doc or say the, the the initial requirements doc in terms of um how we are configuring trust in the deployment environment right like i think we called out that we want to make sure that for um whether you want to specify it for a registry for a repository or for sort of like a, um i forget uh what the correct terminology is like the individual artifact or image you can you can go down and specify what key or what route you want to validate against right yeah. but i think the question is like if you if a key is revoked for one role is it universally revoked um and like that's just a it's just a question of um of scope of what revocation means kind of in this context how would you um not revoke a key like what's sorry I'm, I'm a little bit confused and help me understand this yeah. uh where do you envision sort of like having like a partial revocation of the key oh so like for example so say um one key is you like one team develops both i'm trying to think of an example project name but yeah so, if, so let's go with like the um like ubuntu stable and the ubuntu like um nightly where i don't know if they have a nightly but you know some mm -hmm. project has a stable and a nightly um, release, and they might both be signed by one team to start with. And then maybe um, like you want to have some additional checks on the stable build. So you you revoke the other people, like their access to sign the stable and give it to, you know, some other QA team or something. 
Ah, that's where you're revoking access to use the key, right? Yeah. Um, no, you're, but you're, you're not revoking the key, but yeah, access to it for that. Yeah, I think that gets, um, I think that might fall outside the scope of like how um, keys get, the, you know, distributed and set up. Um, oh. um, my expectation here was that we give a model and we give some best practices and guidance and let, um, uh, let publishers decide how they implement it, right? Um, yeah, I think- Again, that could be done through just relocate, like through just making new keys for new purposes. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think like if we start thinking about like, uh, like the big challenge here is going to be like, you know, how do we set this up for um, open source projects, right? Because I yeah. think that's when, when one where that we expect a lot of churn, like who owns a root there, who owns sort of like individual keys. And I think this is where having like a, an example implementation um, that can be lifted and shifted, I think mm -hmm. is, 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 is going to be helpful. Um, but I think like when you start looking at uh, enterprises, like let's say, uh, Microsoft or Ubuntu, uh, not necessarily Ubuntu, but like Microsoft, like um, where, you know, you have, where you have like designated employees and designated sort of like credentials, um, there's probably already a mechanism that you want to tie into for distributing sort of like keys and for key management. So um, I think there, the question is, well, how does Microsoft share that root information with the rest of the, of, 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 uh, of, of all deployers that are, uh, consuming Microsoft software, uh, and so I think that's 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 where we want to define the specifications for, and then say, well, you know, if you want to use something like uh, uh, tough for this key management, here's how you would do it, and here's what the information would need to kind of be shared. And so I think that's that's how I would address that. Yeah, exactly. Like here's how you should set up those delegations so that you're not reusing keys and and doing all of that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and put some more detail feedback in for this doc then. I mm -hmm. think this is a good starter and this is this is doing well to kind of address the areas. Um, but where I would like to kind of see uh, a little bit more is uh, the pros and cons of the allow list, deny list. And I think your key revocation list is a good starting point for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then let's consider some scenarios uh, and see sort of like what that would mean. Um, I think from a scenario perspective, we have concerns around, um, you know, as we're pushing out updates, like what, you know, are people moving to the latest update? Um, is having an allow list the right model for that? Or should we have signature expiry as like a, as a way of enforcing hygiene or a combination of both? Mm -hmm. um, and then for um, also for sort of like security updates, like, you know, what do we consider insecure, right? Um, I think there's a there's a broad term in saying like, you know, if software is old, it's insecure versus like, you know, if software has a known CV, it's it's insecure. Um, yeah. And I think to a certain extent, you're right on both, um, but like CVEs are more like a, a burning, like, you know, fire versus sort of like older software. You know, if you have like your own CV scanning and things, you may have more acceptable processes for deploying them. Yeah. So I think, coming into sort of like a consensus on what we want a signature to convey and what we consider insecure will help that. So I think that's something I'd look for in this doc. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, all right, awesome. Uh, I think this is great. Um, I will um, get you the detailed feedback first uh, and uh, then I'll go ahead and kind of create the, uh, the different prototypes uh, doc um, and I'll share that with you. Uh, and then uh, lastly, I'll work on the outline doc for uh, key rotation. And I think that can actually handle some of the distribution of trusted keys as well. So uh, you can point to that doc if you want over here as well. Okay. Sounds good. That's good. Great. Well, thanks for making the time. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, I'll see. I, I think we may want to actually have this conversation on an ongoing basis. So uh, okay. is this a good time for you uh, on a regular basis or? Yeah, yeah, I can make this work. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share this at the, I shared this time uh, uh, at the next uh, meeting on Monday uh, and asked that we just kind of like, you know, have anyone that's interested in participating in some of these conversations and potentially picking up some of these work that we're identifying uh, to kind of join us in this. But uh, yeah, this, this was, this was great. All right. Well, have a good day. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.